Hey everybody, I'm Ebony. This is Ebony's Creativity. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel. Today I have for you another furniture flip video and I am super excited to share this video with you because it is different from anything else I've done on this channel before. Typically I'm painting pieces, but in this particular flip, when I saw how beautiful this dresser was in its raw condition, I just could not bear to cover up with paint. You will see, it was absolutely stunning and I just wanted to showcase that for this flip. So I know some people get upset when us furniture artists cover up uh, wood with wood furniture with paint. So this video should make everybody very happy. I know that flipping this piece really did make me happy and it was the fastest seller that I have ever had out of any piece I have ever done. Literally, I posted this on one day and the next day it was sold. If you have not already, please subscribe to my channel. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for returning. If you are a new viewer, please subscribe to my channel if you find the content enjoyable. There are about 100 videos on my channel so far, so there is plenty for every different type of person to enjoy. So please check out my channel, and if you find something that you can relate to or that you enjoy, leave comments, engage with me. I always respond to comments, and I would love to have you as a subscriber here on my channel. So with all that being said, leave me comments. Let me know what you do and don't like about the video. Let me know how you think it turned out. Any feedback that you have for me, I'm open to it. Engage with me, thumbs up the video, subscribe, and let's hop right into this flip. So here's the piece that we're going to be working on today. As you can see, it is covered in a terrible white paint job and it has this nice inspirational message that hoes are mad and stickers on top of it. Typically I hate stickers, but we'll see what we can do about it. Not very many body issues, just a nice sanding is gonna probably cut it for this piece. As you can see here along the side, not too much going on with it on either side. So yeah, pretty good piece in pretty good condition. Inside the drawer, I found these paper liners and I will compare these things to having carpet over hardwoods in an old house. You never know what's gonna be underneath it until you just pull them up. Sometimes they leave behind a sticky residue and hold odor, so I will not be leaving them on. I did take a peek, as you can see here, and it looked really good, so hopefully that is consistent throughout all three drawers. That would be really great, and hopefully these things do not leave behind any kind of sticky residue or they aren't covering up big damage. I'm gonna start out by taking my 40 grit sandpaper and just really going in on this piece. I have to get this white paint off. I don't know what kind of paint this is, but it is very thick and it was coming off. I don't know if you can see in this frame. Normally paint comes off more like in a dusty consistency. This was coming off in chunks. You probably just saw a big chunk fly across the screen. Um, I'm gonna move in closer in a second so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about, but I do have a respirator on in this video. You can't see my face, so you can't tell. But I'm not sure exactly what's up with this paint. I'm not, I don't know what kind of paint they would have used. It's really thick, and it did not absorb into the wood at all. It's kind of like formed a shell sitting on top. So I found that really weird, but eventually I did get it all off. And as you can see, the wood grain was absolutely beautiful. So my initial plan was to paint this pink, but at this point I decided that if the rest of this came out half as good as the top did, I'm not going to paint it. So as I was coming up with a backup plan for this, I decided to go ahead and remove the drawers and begin to work on those. The first two came out pretty easily. You know, you can kind of see them sliding out, but this third drawer did give me a run for my money. It was kind of stuck. And so I had to wrestle with it for a while before it would come out and the track is broken and that's what's stopping it from coming out. But we'll address that in a second. The more I sanded this, the more beautiful it became to me. It was like a miracle that something that was treated so badly and covered with this horrible message and this thick, ugly paint could come out so beautiful. I'm not quite sure why anybody would have painted over this. Um, I don't know, but I'm happy to have uncovered its initial beauty again. You can see the stickers, they kind of just really came off easily, which I was happy about. 
because sometimes stickers can leave behind residue that will clog up my sander and make everything much harder for me. So it really did come off easily, as you can see. And I was able to just kind of plow through this. So that was really happy. I'm telling you, this was one of my favorite pieces to date because it was just so easy to work with. Um, now I am sanding the body. As you can see, the paint is continuing to flake off. Um, while I had this at this angle, I did notice a, da a damaged area on the side of one of the legs. So we will address that in the next clip. But I did just kind of want to show you me sanding this. Initially, I was going to take this trim off, but I decided to leave it and I'm glad that I did. Now we're going to address this area that I told you was damaged. And I'm just going to take plastic wood. There is another product that I have used before um, that would have worked better, but I do not have any. So this will work just fine. Um, I'm going to have to make it pretty thick in order for it to kind of hold the shape of the previous piece that would have been here that broke off. But that's fine. I'd rather do a few layers of this that I have on hand than go buy something. Because this is all about making money, right? So I'm just kind of flattening out the edges and leaving the middle of this kind of thick. I want to flatten out the edge so that it will be securely adhered to the piece. And the middle portion, I kind of just want it there for the shape. So you can see me kind of flattening out on the edges and leaving the middle piece thick. I hope that's making sense. I'm trying to describe to you the best way that I can. I figured that I would have to do this a couple of times, but I was okay with that because I didn't want to have to go out and buy something. So I did use the 20 grit sandpaper to kind of sand down what I've done so far. And also I used 220 grit sandpaper to sand the whole entire piece. If you don't know about sandpaper, the higher the number is, that's more of a smoothing effect, the lower the number of the sandpaper. So when I started out with 40 grit, it was because I had a lot of grunt work to do, a lot of paint to remove, a lot of things to smooth out. So you'd want to use a lower number for that, but this higher number is just strictly for smoothing before you would apply paint or your stain. Basically, it's like the final step before you do any painting, staining, or finishing. So I didn't 100% like the way that the corner that I fixed looked, but it's starting to look pretty good. So I know that if I do another layer of it, it will fill out just fine. So that's what I'm going to do here. Another layer of the wood filler using the same technique that I did the first time, kind of putting the thickness in the middle and adhering it on the edges by using a flat finger and just pulling downward on the edges. So you can kind of see here, I'm leaving it thick in the middle and then I'm flattening it out around the edges just so that it will all be stuck together and stuck to the piece. This worked really well. Like I said, there is a better product that I could have used for this. And if you watched uh, any of my previous flips where I've had to fix or fill in, you may have seen it. Um, kind of like a Bondo type of product, but I didn't have it and I didn't feel like going to get it. This worked just fine. I just had to do it kind of in more steps. So after getting that done, I did sand it again with 220 grit sandpaper. I have a clip uh, coming up of how that turned out, so you'll be able to see a little bit more closely. But after I finished all my sanding, you can see here I used my blower to blow all the dirt, dust, and debris away. Um, I wanted to make sure I hit the bottom. You never want to do one of these pieces without cleaning the bottom. They typically have spider, spider eggs and all different kind of things, cobwebs, so I just like to make sure that I clean thoroughly. Here I am doing the same with the drawers. On this day, it's about 100 degrees outside, so I am eager to go inside and finish this piece up, but I wanna make sure I won't be bringing in any bugs or dirt, so I'm trying to get these as clean as possible. So once I was able to take the drawers inside, I am gonna do an assessment of what these liners are covering. Hopefully it's nothing too bad, like I said before. And I'm just going to start by, it was kind of loose here in the middle, so that's where I started at, till I could get a corner lifted. And I am just, it's really dirty, so you can kind of see me brushing my fingers off. And I am just going to get a firm grip on it and yank it off. 
And like I said before, this is kind of like ripping up old carpet in an old house. You never know if you're going to get beautiful hardwoods underneath or some junky floors that you're going to have to replace. So in this instance, I got some beautiful hardwood and I was very, very happy about that. I'll only be showing you one of the drawers just for time's sake, but this is the worst of the three. So I decided to show you this one. And when I say worse, it's just because it has those couple of little ink stains right there in the middle. But I tried to sand it off. It also has a little bit of paint residue from that white paint. I tried to sand it um, and all I was doing was just scraping the inside of the drawer. So as a furniture artist, sometimes you have to know when to hold them and when to fold them. So I went ahead and just left it as it was because I didn't want to put a whole bunch of scratches in the surface. I figure a couple of little ink dots were better than to scratch up the whole drawer trying to remove those so I just left them um, and now I'm going to use my cleaning vinegar and my microfiber cloth and I am just going to get this as clean as I can I'm focusing on the corners and really just doing a thorough cleaning of the entire drawer I did mention earlier that I was afraid that those liners would leave a sticky residue but it did not thank God you know, this dresser is just becoming better and better with each step, and I'm getting more and more excited about it every step of the way. No sticky residue from those stickers, no sticky residue from the drawer liners. The liners were covering up some beautiful wood. The wood was beautiful when I sanded it. You guys, this is like a dream piece. So as you can see here, I am still cleaning, but I think I forgot to mention that I got this piece for completely free from Facebook Marketplace. So this was a really, really great deal. I am so glad I came across this piece. I went looking for ideas online about how I can jazz this up without completely covering it in paint. And I came across stenciling as a really good idea. So I was able to hop on my Cricut Maker and make this stencil for less than $2. I really struggled with the Cricut and I'm not a pro at all, but I was able to make this stencil and it really worked out well and was really cheap. So if you struggle with the Cricut and you want me to show you how I made this, it does have some mistakes, but it worked out just fine anyway. You want me to show you how I did that, leave a comment and let me know. I can get that video up for you pretty quickly. So I take my stencil down to my drawer and I pulled out this folk art acrylic paint and my Dollar Tree dabber. And I put some of the paint on an old food container lid. And my goal here is not to saturate the dabber. You want to do an even thin coat. You do not want to stencil when you have too much paint on your tool because you're just going to make a mess and you will not get crisp, clean lines. Remember, you can always add more paint, but you can never take away once you make a mistake. And I do not want to go through the trouble of adding this paint only to have to sand it off and clean again and then reapply the stencil and start all over from scratch basically. So I have very little paint on my dabber and I am just going in very gently. You can see my stencil is kind of lifting with certain motions that I'm making. So I'm just moving in a way that will decrease the amount of lifting of the stencil to make sure that I get as clean lines as possible. I'm trying to really make sure I cover the area. I'm working slowly and I'm holding what I can down with my finger and dabbing with the other hand. So once you start this, you can kind of get your own rhythm for it. My goal was just not to have my stencil lift. And so I'm doing everything I can to kind of keep it still. Sometimes you can still see it lifting, but in this particular instance, it worked out well for me. So kind of just get your own technique and try to do it the best way you can, I guess. You can see I'm kind of rolling my dabber and that helped my stencil to stop lifting so much. So like I said, once you start, you can get your rhythm. The important thing is to make sure that you do not have too much paint on your dabber because that will cause a messy stencil job. So here is the moment of truth where I am ripping my stencil off and I am very happy about my results. They turned out pretty good. So my stencil was not long enough to cover up this whole drawer. These drawers are pretty long. So I had to kind of match it up and then do it half by half. So here you kind of just see me doing the same thing I did on the first half on the second half, discouraging that stencil from lifting as much as I can. 
and making sure that I get a full coverage over the whole entire stencil portion. Here I am lifting again for another reveal and I was very happy about how this turned out. Look at that guys, it looked so good. You might recall earlier when I was trying to remove the third drawer and it was stuck, this nail is what was causing it to get stuck. So I'm gonna be using some Gorilla Wood Glue and fixing this track. And since I forget to buy clamps every single time I go to the hardware store, I'm just going to be putting this in place with my staple gun, kind of just to hold it while the glue dries. I did not want to tap that nail in until after the staples were there to hold it in place, else it would have started sliding around because the glue is still wet. So after that was all good and dry and working well, I went back to stenciling that final drawer. You can kind of see at the top of the screen the other two drawers are finished at this point. And here is some footage of me just finishing up the stencil on the third and final drawer. And I was so glad about how this turned out. You guys, <laughs> you don't understand how happy this flip made me. Oh my gosh. Now with the boho look, things do not have to be perfect, perfect. But I did see a few areas that I wanted to address where I didn't line the stencil up 100% accurately. So I just took a really, really small Dollar Tree paintbrush with a little bit of paint on the tip and I just kind of filled those areas in. And this worked really well to camouflage some of the mistakes that I made. So I am still falling more and more in love with this dresser. I don't think I previously mentioned this, but these drawers formally have four holes per drawer front. So somebody took this down from a pool that required two holes to a pool that required one hole previously. And they did a pretty good job of filling the pre-existing hole. So I didn't have to worry about that. But there was a little bit of visibility from where they filled it. They didn't really do a professional job. But I was able to use my stencil and kind of position it in a way that covered really well the previous mark. And now you can't really see it unless I told you and I pointed it out to you. You wouldn't be able to see it. So that's why I kind of didn't focus on it. It really became a non-factor after I covered it. that portion up that was previously filled with the stencil. It was good as new. So after I had all my paint down from my stencils, I used my favorite top coat, which is the polycrylic and a Dollar Tree foam brush. And I am just going over all the drawer fronts, making sure that I lock that stencil into place. I will be doing two coats of polycrylic, but for your viewing pleasure, I'm only going to show you one. So just know that I did do two coats and I always sand in between coats. So I would apply a coat, wait for it to dry, sand with 400 or 220 grit sandpaper, and then go back with the second coat of polycrylic. This is really going to help with waterproofing the piece and also kind of seal in that stencil from any dents or dings that may come this piece's way. Although with this particular piece, it kind of has that rustic, distressed, kind of not perfect vibe. So if it did get dinged up, it probably wouldn't matter that much. But I like my pieces to have integrity and I like them to remain in the condition that I sell them in. So I want to do as good of a job as possible with my top coat, just like I want to do with my sanding and my painting and every step that I do. I just want to really make sure that I'm giving my customer a good quality piece and good condition and I'm doing my best work. So as I previously mentioned, it was really hot outside this day. And so after I applied my final layer of wood filler, I did go ahead and sand inside, um, just hand sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper. And now it is to my liking. So there's just one more step in the bodywork on this piece to make it functional. As we recall, that third drawer was stuck. And so when I yanked it out with some force, that nail that was in there was pulling this piece of the track out as well. So I wanted to go ahead and use some of my Gorilla Wood Glue and stick this piece of the track back in. But because there is such a small piece that was remaining on here, I also wanted to go ahead and pre-drill a hole and use a screw to hold this in. I was afraid that if I just went in with the screw, it would split. These wood tracks are very, very fragile. And one wrong move can cause the whole thing to split. Then you're looking at a whole different issue. So I carefully pre-drilled a hole for a teeny tiny screw. 
and I was able to screw in the screw. I didn't even want to use my drill. I'm doing everything by hand with this track, keeping it as light of a touch as possible because like I said, these pieces are really, really fragile and I did not want this to break. So I'm just gonna hand screw this in with my little mini screwdriver and that worked really well to hold this in place while the glue dried. One of these days, I'm going to remember to get some clamps to hold things in place while glue dries, but up until now, I've done pretty good without it. So I'm gonna just keep on keeping on. And here is the back part of the dresser. And I'm also going to do the same thing, hand screw in a little screw just to hold that in place while the glue dries. And this one is all fixed. I ran out of my cleaning vinegar, so I'm going to be taking this simple green and I'm going to be using a microfiber cloth again and just really doing a deep clean of this piece. I'm talking the whole body. At this point, the drawers are already done. I've already shown you those complete. So the body is what I'm working on. Since there will be no paint, there's no room for any dirt, dust, imperfections, anything to hide. So I am going to be giving this a really, really, really deep clean and then I am going to be rinsing it off. So here you see me cleaning, then I'll be switching my, my towel and going in with a towel that just has water on it and rinsing it off. So I did the whole thing, the inside, all the drawer tracks, the whole internal area. I made sure the sidewalls, all of it. It's very clean after I finished with this step. So once it was clean and dried, I did go back to my Cricut and make another stencil just because I did not really like how the area that I filled with the wood filler was not 100% perfect in terms of you can kind of see. So I thought I'd do another stencil to kind of camouflage that. And so I'm just taking this one little strip of a pattern and I'm going to do this down both sides. And as you can see, my method here is still the same as it was when I did the stencils on the drawer fronts. I'm just using a light touch, kind of rolling my dabber and getting as little paint as possible on it, holding the stencil with my hand. This one was bobbing up and down too, even though you can see I tried to tape it. But I'm just being very patient with this and using a light touch and a little bit of paint and I'm just gonna do one stripe up each side with my stencil and my dabber. And this really did help to camouflage the area that I was not 100% pleased with. So I'm glad I came up with this idea at the last minute. And I used my circular saw to cut out a piece of hardboard that I got from Home Depot. You get a big sheet of this for fairly inexpensive, much cheaper than using wood. So. It always works really well as a backing piece. So I'm just using my nail gun and one inch brad nails to secure this piece of hardboard to the back of my piece. Those, Whenever I see a rickety or kind of old or dirty looking backing piece, I like to replace it. It just gives a better look. Sometimes those things have some bad smells and I just replace them whenever I see fit. Okay guys, so I appreciate you sticking around to this point of the video. I wanted to pop in once more and request that you subscribe to my channel. I am doing chit chat videos, thrifting videos, home decor videos, DIY videos, including these furniture flip or trash to treasure type of videos. So if you find any of those enjoyable, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Like the video, leave me a comment, letting me know how you think this piece turned out. And without further ado, let's hop right into the final reveal.
If you have the time, please select another one of my videos to watch from the choices on your screen and I will talk to you all in my next video. Bye y'all.